Hey, Apophis here. Have you ever wanted to be a burly, thick, and rippled man? Crushing your opponents between your chiseled muscles. Ready to see all the benefits of steroid use? Well, boy do I have a build for you today. That's right, we're gonna go ahead and test how good maximum strength, that's 99, is in PvP. One might actually wonder if it's necessary. And to tell you the truth, at 150 you actually do have room for it. And by having 99 strength with a 1.5 times stat multiplier two-handed, you could actually brute force some weapons into just being stronger than they would be on their natural scaling builds. There's a reasonable version of the build. Nah, wait. You guys didn't come here for that. You came here to see me raise that strength to 99, so let's just go ahead and do that. There we go, nice and roided up. Well, so, I'll keep the arena section relatively green. We're just going to show off a few weapons that did pretty well in 1v1, but not so hot when it came to 1v3 or 1v2. So this would be the Stone Club, the Clean Rot Sword, and the Sham Shirt to some degree. That one was still pretty good in invasions, but it, it needed a backup weapon, I think. Yeah, Stone Club is pretty fun. So here we have Clean Rot, and... I don't know, I didn't have a lot of success with this weapon, even in the arena. The approach game is not that good. Running R2 does seem to be better than running R1, but the majority of your damage is going to come from two-handed R1, which happened to be a better bowl catch than any of the running attacks. And here we have the Shamshir. Sword Dance doing work there. And the advantage of this weapon is just how easy it is to mash on opponents with it. If they're not paying attention or they delay roll, you can often get a second hit. It's a nice pressure weapon with good approaches, not too many weaknesses. But alright, let's get into the invasions. So, Stone Club was a weapon where... I don't know, I felt the most let down by it. I had such a good time with it in the arena, just bonking people to death in like three hits. But the tiny range and I guess vertical attack string make it very difficult to deal with like a multi-person situation like this. This person just happened to do a bad roll and I caught them with the running R2, but a lot of the time they just reaction roll and attack that it's going to do. And when someone else is pressuring you, it's difficult you can't fend off multiple opponents at the same time. Even with the, the little bit of extra armor. So getting zoned out is a pretty real possibility as well. Yeah, almost every attack from the club can be reaction rolled. And against light roll, you pretty much should just give up. And here we have the anchor. The anchor is probably one of my favorite strength weapons. I mostly played it at that level 80 range, but it was pretty interesting to see just how much damage you could do at 150. And now we have the two-handed sword talisman to add on to our damage stack. So on counter hit, it could probably do about 1.6k. On normal hit, the R2 with War Cry, Roar Talisman, Two-Handed Talisman, and Spear Talisman. Well, you're not going to spear, but with all that stuff, about 1.2k, which is still extremely meaty. That's enough to kill an opponent in two hits. Um, so remember how I talked about light roll being a little 
impossible for the stone club. Well, it's also a problem for this weapon as well. But this guy's just gonna stupidly try to trade. Yep, that ain't gonna work, buddy. There's a discussion later I'll have about time to kill in regards to this game. But uh, yeah, so I just gave up on trying to hit this guy with anchor, light rolling, and lagging. So the perfect storm to just not use a weapon when it approaches. Backhand blades running R1 is really good for catching light rollers. Honestly, it doesn't hurt to have it as a sidearm, especially if you're using wing tier to manage your weight load. Funny thing about this bonfire duel is, so I actually beat them twice, and the third time they turned on the hunter ring. And, uh, yeah, I didn't switch off the anchor, and I actually lost that, and they started pointing to the ground, acting like they had done something. I really don't like these people. And occasionally you will run into a gank like this at 150 where I, I honestly do not know what I should have done other than maybe go further into the stage and not try to engage them here. Because while that roar spell is pretty terrible in PvE, in PvP it'll stun you long enough for all their buddies to come in and hit you. So this was pretty much bound for failure. But you can't win them all. Now we're switching to a classic. This is the uh, Knight Rider Halberd with Flaming Strike. And it has a pretty meaty amount of AR, even one hit. I think you're sitting around 750 AR. And we're using the hand axe or offhand because it's a 13 frame weapon that always stuns. Pretty well known combo. Yeah, Flaming Strike is just so good. If you're below 100 poise, the Flame Burst part is guaranteed to stun them. If you get a counter hit, then the second part is also a guaranteed part. So they can be counter hit from an actual animation or from getting caught in their panic roll. It is tighter than it used to be, like back on the game's release, but the skill is still extremely good. Thank you for those little shitter enemies. Got me a little bit of stun there. Yep. Got roll caught, neither he mashed or that actually did combo. So that takes care of that. Oh my god, two mages and they're lagging. My favorite thing, huh? So I did try War Cry out with the Knight Rider Halberd, and I remember back in the day that was a good skill combo i wasn't enjoying it that much at this point i'm not sure if i didn't have spear talisman on i'm pretty sure i did but actually hitting somebody with the r2 is kind of a task because the range is extremely short i guess this guy must have run out of mana or something i don't know but you get the repost because he actually tried blocking without a great shield. That was a mistake. Now for his buddy. I'm surprised he was able to dodge it off that fat roll. Another skill that I used in a previous video that I've come to enjoy is uh, Stormcaller. So we're about to see it in action. I wonder if anyone in the comments knows this. When you apply a quick grease, does it actually add to the base AR of the weapon when you use a weapon art? Or does it simply add damage on it? But yeah, Stormcaller is great. It stops mashers. If you guard break them, you actually get the second part as a combo. And uh, it hits on every side. And it's got a little bit of armor. It has less armor than before the DLC, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, see what I mean about it stopping people trying to flank you? 
And if they roll sideways, well, they're gonna have a bad time. I think on my quality build, I probably could hit 1.5k on a Stormcaller with uh, Enraged Divine Beast on. I need to do another video of that one. But yep, just mash him out with the Hand Axe at low HP. Tried side rolling to get away from the Halberd, but uh, that's why I'm the side on. Oh, here's a new one though. Freya's her great sword. And it does get the bonus on Savage Lion's Claw, although I think that probably would have killed him either way with this much AR. I think we're sporting about 824 AR, two handed, which is a lot. Oh, well, just gulped him down the pit. Why not? I didn't even realize there was a third panel. I'm not sure what the other two were fighting down there, but this guy decides to give me an honorable little duel here. And while the running attack on this weapon is good, it's not great. If you have to finish an opponent, you're better off using something else. Like just a faster weapon. But Sword Dance does make up for some of its weaknesses. It's yet another armored move and moves you forward and it will catch his people. So at a close quarters situation, it can be enough. Yeah, this Kevin had some moves. Oh wow, pretty impressive damage on the sword dance, that's without exalted flesh. If I had a uh, supply of Arteria Flowers, then I probably would have used it in more of these invasions. This fight was so obnoxious, I was just running around projectiles for like an entire two minutes before this fight. I just decided, screw it, I'm just going to switch to the back end blades, it's just too difficult to catch like... Two people who are just going to move away from you in an open field. And somehow that mashing actually beat his mashing, but whatever, the host is already dead. The three-man squad assembled, and uh, that, that's why you wear armor in PvP. But now for everyone's favorite weapon, the, uh, the Gut Sword. And uh, so I'm running Royal Knight's Resolve here with the Crouch Poke Talisman and Two-Handed Sword Talisman. And uh, yeah, thanks Stilovsky for this build. It is pretty strong. I think that guy had his Wondrous Flask popped because on most opponents that does about 900 damage on the Crouch Poke even without the Royal Knight's Resolve active. So now we get in our discussion about time to kill, right? So I prefer this weapon to the Anchor at high level play. Because you're not going to one-shot most players with the Anchor Warcry R2. That's going to do 1.6k damage. Which will still leave them with a bit of life. And because they're low life, they're going to be cautious. But I've noticed that this weapon will leave most players at about half life after most interactions. And for whatever reason, people are a lot less cautious with half their life bar versus a quarter or a third, right? So we're just using the armor there. I feel like if he had just readied up his uh, moonlight art there, he would have just killed me, but oh well. Take the trade just to ready Royal Knight's Resolve, because we know the next hit will be about 1.2k. Yep, there we go. And that was dumb of me. I should have weapon swapped and immediately chased him, but now we actually have to finish him. But it's okay. Clean rot's pretty quick. And finally, we have the Pata. This weapon is really disgusting. I think even if they removed the run R2 to R2 combo that all fists used to have, it would still be one of the best weapons in the game. It's basically the length of a clean rot sword, but with insane tracking and two hits. And it's pretty light. So you can run it with Lacerating and Spirit Talisman 
and Bolgo, and then still have room for other stuff. And because it has so many attacks of piercing property, it's a great candidate for Spear Talisman as well. So let's say in a situation where you're plus and you don't think they're going to run, you think that they're just going to like stand up and mash, you can just hit the stand R2 like over and over. And just like pick up a free like 700 something damage. And yeah, with Endure, you could definitely out-trade a lot of stuff that you normally shouldn't, because you're going to get the stun on the second hit of the R2. So in a way, it did make Clean Rot a bit obsolete, but we'll, we'll see if they patch it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the build video, enjoyed the footage, and we covered a lot of weapons today. Uh, if you have any you know, questions or comments, feel free to leave them below, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Alright.